Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reality Realness with three S's. I'm your faithful host, Chantel Francis, here to cover episode seven and eight of The Traitors is Reality Realness's own traitor, Matthew. How are you this evening, Matthew? I didn't even know it was you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it's me, Ari. Ari the Bachelor from 2008. Um, I'm doing great. I really love this uh, batch of episodes. So I think we did four or five um, yesterday, but uh, like six through eight was really, uh, really fun. And I'm definitely digging like the end game here and kind of the twists and turns that have popped up around uh, along the road. Absolutely. Especially with like, you know, because it's all dropped at the same time, it's hard to do a recap. And so I really wanted to like go and watch the next episodes, but I'm like, ah, oh, but I don't want to like, I don't want to be informed when I do like the recap here. So the fact that we had that cliffhanger where Cody is asking Sari, like, what do you think, Sari? And then it fade to black. And we're coming in on that. I think the episode's called The Mask is Slipping. So when I saw that episode title, I was like, slipping. Does that mean that she doesn't say Cody? I was like, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? And so she's around the table. And I thought that I wasn't sure if she was going to actually be able to name him. And I, but I, then I wasn't surprised by the fact that she kind of skirted around answering that question by basically saying, I'm voting with the faithfuls. Yeah, I I kind of had the same initial thought as well, where, I mean, I saw the episode title and then it ended on that cliffhanger. I was thinking like, okay, like this would, this is too good to be true. Like Suri is going to end up like maybe planting some more seeds, but like Cody will stick around for a little bit longer and then like immediately get into the next episode. And it's just like the full on like downfall of Cody uh, and the, the breakdown at the table was just like so so awesome of uh, of Suri there absolutely and everybody pretty much everybody voted for Cody other than Quinton who voted for Kate um wait hold on is this am I am I crazy no okay no it did switch some people were going for Rachel so Cody voted for Rachel. Shelby voted for Rachel. Angelica voted for Cody. And this is when the Cody train started. Stephanie voted for Cody. Rachel, Cody, Quinton, Kate. Uh, Sari, Cody, Kate, Rachel. Andy, Cody. Christian, Cody. Ari, Cody. And, you know, Cody is crying when he goes to, like, the, the reveal portion. And it was, we could see that it was taking a toll on him. Um, he messed up big time. What a, yeah. what a downfall, because he was in a pretty good position, and he really ruined his game. I think Cody is just, like, all, he's so used to playing from ahead. Like, in both his Big Brother seasons, he was just always, like, in a dominant alliance. Like, he never really was in like major danger from what I remember, like certainly in his winning season was never once in danger. Um, so yeah, I do think like the fact that he was like, there was this pressure on him and kind of eyes on him was getting to him along with the fact that um, he um, did not seem to like, like sending like innocent people home. Um, so yeah, it was definitely taking a toll on him and, um, and yeah, you could tell he was getting emotional. And I do think it was a true blind side. Like, did you get that vibe as well? Or do you think he kind of saw it coming? I don't think he saw it coming. I think that he thought that Christian and Sari would help protect him. Because yeah. if Sari, I mean, I don't think they would have had the numbers. So at that point, Sari did have to go against Cody. But I don't think that he realized how how bad like a bad position that he was in. I think he thought that maybe people suspected him, but that he was still going to be able to push Rachel, you know, and that Rachel would be able to yeah. go up for him. But they didn't, they didn't even need um, Sari and um, Christian's vote. I don't think, hold on. Let's look one, two, three, four, four. I guess. Wait, okay. It's four. And then Rachel would have had one, Rachel two, one, Three, three. I guess there actually were kind of the there split, folks. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, but I love like Sari kind of like mapping it out where it's like, hey, I don't want to vote for Cody unless like I know the votes are there. And that's where I was getting a bit of pause as well, where it's like, okay, like Sari wants him gone. Like we know like Sari loves making a big move too. And like strategically, I think it was good for her game. Mm -hmm. But um, just like she doesn't want him to take that big swing and then have Cody like turn against her. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm like, obviously like, this is the first season I've watched of this. So I don't really know how like the mechanics of a trader on trader, trader on trader crime works. Um, from the other couple seasons you've watched, like, is this typically like how it plays out or like, where it's like a full blind side, or is it usually like head to head, they're going at each other? Um, I've definitely seen where it's, um, it's either me or you kind of thing. And so then if there's a third trader, they have to kind of make the decision as to which trader they're going to keep, essentially. Um, so that right. has been uh, something that's happened that's played out. Um, usually they know it's kind of coming, but they're not sure if they're going to go home or not. You know what I mean? Like they're not sure about the votes. But I do feel like he was pretty shocked that he had – yeah. more people that were kind of coming for him yeah definitely and like people like he felt aligned to um so yeah i felt like a true blind side i'm sure like we'll hear more in the coming days when like the cast starts to chat a bit more but um definitely felt like a blind side yeah i think i mean uh, the tears were also probably because it was such a blind side too you know what i mean like yeah. and a relief that he could just like be himself because that's what i was saying from the beginning that i just didn't feel like cody was acting like himself um and if they if anybody even watched him on big brother they would realize that he is a traitor <laughs> you know what i mean like he's just yeah. not like this at all how how do you feel like just in reality shows in general when like the like reality titans like come back and like you see their downfall like is that something you like to see or you like kind of are rooting for the um, like bigger name reality stars? Um, I think it depends on the star. So I've never been a Cody fan. So I was I I didn't like the choice of him being a traitor anyways, because I usually root for the traitors. So I didn't really want to be rooting for Cody personally. Um, so I was very pleased with his downfall, particularly because I, I felt as though he got a really easy ride for all stars. And I, I didn't like how he played that game. Yes, he did a really great job. And like, you know, he got his alliances in a line in, in, you know, in order. And he had people that were all going to take him to the end. Like he, he did a pretty decent game job in big brother all stars, yeah. but he was, I think was given by production that first head of household. We can talk about the, that. I remember I was so, so pissed mm-hmm. about how that first head of household yeah. went down. And there was something else that happened that was in his favor that I can't remember right off the top of my head, but I just felt that the production wanted him to win. And he, he, he just had everything to his favor. And so I just didn't feel like he was that great of a game player. I think he just had a really lucky season. Um, and I just am not really a fan of his personality. So I've watched yeah. him on some lives and stuff like that. I'm just like, I'm, I'm not a fan of him. So, yeah, I find, I find with Cody, uh, and again, like, I mean, I'm not a fan either, but, um, I find with him, like his kind of gameplay, like, while it is effective for the most part, it's, um, it sucks the fun out of the game. Mm. Like he's not like, he's not a fun game player. Like he's not making like massive swings. It's all like very much like follow, like follow the leader. Um, and it's just like, we have like a hit list and we're going to follow the hit list like to a T. And that's like something I don't love about Cody. And mm-hmm. um, I do like, I mean, with like Suri and Christian as the traders, like they are more like chaotic. Yes. Where like Christian is like, chaotic and like a little bit like sloppy where Suri is chaotic but like very methodical Mm -hmm. um which is like to me as a trader is much more entertaining and like Suri is kind of just like the like the straight man there where it's like he's kind of the boring the boring um like sounding board more but I was very happy that like Suri was the one that was kind of making a lot of the decisions throughout the season 
For yeah, for sure. And like in the beginning, I was like, "Oh, really? You're gonna let them like do what they they want?" Um, but I was very happy mm-hmm. when she. Uh, I want L- Ryan God, and like I'm gonna get what I want here. And I was like, I didn't think that yeah. he was gonna buckle, and he did. And like, that buckling was his downfall. I think. I think that it rattled him so much taking out Ryan there that he he just felt so guilty, and he needed to say something to Kyle, and it ended up being his whole demise, unfortunately, yeah. for him. So now that uh, that tr- they they caught a traitor, <coughs> sorry. People don't think that Shelby reacted in a way that a faithful would react. She wasn't happy. So what do you think about Shelby's reaction here? She just was like kind of somber and just kind of down. Yeah, I mean, I didn't catch earlier on and maybe it was just me missing it, but I didn't like catch that her and Cody had like a super close relationship. Me neither. Um, Yeah, I didn't see much. Like, I mean, they definitely like had conversations, but I didn't see them like getting super close so i think it was uh, the think voting like maybe... together was what people were saying oh like she was upset that she was not part of like the vote against cody oh no no i think that people are, are making them seem like they were uh, in cahoots because they seem to be voting together before he was um banished and uh, so okay. that when she he was banished um, she was upset that she lost a traitor is what they're kind of saying with her reaction. Uh, got it. Yeah. And I think maybe, maybe it was now or a little bit later on. I, I think she was, they were kind of alluding to like, maybe Cody was like manipulating her. Um, and, uh, she didn't realize that like she was being manipulated by Cody. I thought it was a little strange. Uh, and like Shelby's been pretty quiet throughout the season. So uh, I guess like as the numbers dwindle, like they got to show a little bit more. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a pretty, pretty odd reaction there. Yeah. And so now Steph thinks that Kate and Shelby are the tra- the other traders. And it's like, Steph, like you were right about Cody, but that does not mean that you're right about Kate and Shelby. And she yeah. really seems to believe that now she is like the traitor detector. Uh, and she's so wrong, which is fine. Be wrong. Um, the more you're wrong, the more Sari is getting closer to winning this <laughs> game. So I'm fine yeah. with it. So Ari is the person that's kind of bringing to the forefront Shelby's reaction being suspicious. And I'm like, Ari, it's not really that suspicious. Like if you like, just because you're like, yes, like you could be like, oh my God, like that, like we're still so wrong about like, like she's so wrong about what she's thinking. You know, she did not probably Mm -hmm. think that Cody was a traitor. So she's just like, oh my God, like I was completely bamboozled by this dude. And now I have to reassess all my thoughts. So I could rationalize it the other way. But I guess if you're looking for a traitor, you're going to make anything that someone does be uh, a traitorous, treacherous, uh, sketchy move, we'll say. Mm-hmm. So we see the traitors meet up and uh, we see, we hear that Christian's like, yeah, he was making himself become a target. And um I love that they're saying, like, obviously we're keeping Kate. Like, I love that Kate is being held hostage here, but she's not quitting. Yeah. Oh, no. Kate is, like, bringing everything, uh, especially these last couple episodes. Like, she has been, like, pure entertainment, just like that. Like, Lone Wolf, who's just, like, fucking up, like, all the missions, uh, doesn't care. But, like, I think she also, like, deep down knows that, like, hey, if I act like this, they'll probably have to keep me. So, um... I like, and I love how like they're all like willing to keep her uh, up to this point. So yeah, I'm I'm happy she's kind of sticking around uh, through the stretch run here. Me too. Um, but uh, yeah, Kate is like really providing everything for me. Everything. So we, uh, we I love breakfast and speculation happening. Uh, Kate arrives, and people are surprised that Kate arrives. Um, Ari shows everybody that he had the shield. Uh, Rachel arrives and we learned that I guess it was between um, Rachel and Angelica that um, Angelica mm-hmm. is the one that got murdered. He was, she was up on, she was on trial and she was murdered. Um, and obviously she had to be murdered. She, uh, sorry, Angelica, I'm sure you're lovely, but she wasn't bringing anything but tears. Tears fine, but like, I need some strategy. I need you to 
not just be swayed by everybody. I need you to have your own opinions and like, I just need more from you and you weren't bringing it. Yeah. And the traders need to have the feud between Rachel and Kate. And so does the show and the producers. So sorry, Angelica, you gots to go. Angela, or Angela, um, Alan congratulates Rachel and Kate for making it through another murder. Kate, Savage Kate is like, I, maybe I'll take um, Angelica's room, <laughs> like her room. And they're like, oh my God, <laughs> you're just trying to take her room? <laughs> she, It's so easy to get under those people's skin. Perfect. Yeah, and it's like so funny that like everyone is just like, after every vote, everyone is just like, oh, like Kate has to be the traitor. Like, look at how Kate's behaving. She has to be the traitor. It's like, no, like, come on. Like, she's definitely not the traitor. Please, <laughs> like, stop. there's no it's way. It's so obvious. <laughs> No, yeah, it's so obvious. It's just like the fact that after every single vote, they like they'll just go after her as the traitor. Um, it's just like it makes no sense. And like at this point, it's like, how do you not realize? I know like this everyone's new to the game, but uh it seems like very straightforward. <laughs> right? Um, I, I mean it, it, maybe they can't see what's going on because they're in the game. And so they have like a, they don't have perspective and they, the, they, they kind of feed off of everybody else and everybody else's suspic suspicions and thoughts. And so mm -hmm. I, I think they just don't want to go out on a limb necessarily. So they just allow the group thing to come in and, and, and just like believe that everything Kate's doing is what a trader would do when it's actually the complete opposite of what a trader would do, which they'll learn yeah. after they watch back the season. Mm -hmm. Do you think that anybody knows the outcome of the season um, before it airs or like, cause, cause when I was watching those, um, those preseason press interviews, uh, it didn't, I couldn't tell wh who was who and, wh and what was going down. I'm wondering though, cause like if Sari ended up having to, like steal the money from Steph, like their mm -hmm. relationship could potentially be tarnished, you know? And so I'm just wondering like when they find out who's a traitor, all that stuff, if it was before it aired or not, what do you think? Uh, well, yeah, I'm not sure. Cause I don't know like how the like format typically works. Like in the UK version, how do they like announce the winner? Is it like, is it? Um, oh, um, it's a banishment. Sarah, like they did, a, they do a banishment outside. I don't remember how they do it on Austra Australia. So they don't like bring back everyone that was murdered. No, and... no, 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 no. Um, okay, it's just the people that are left, and they just keep. They you could do as many banishments as you want until you feel like it's only faithfuls left. And so, mm. at, like it's you just keep okay. on doing rounds until you're like, I think we got out all the traitors. So. That's what they did in the UK. The you in Australia, they did it. I think they still were able to continuously do banishments, but it was just a different format, like style. Okay, no. got it. Yeah. So I I feel like if I had to guess, I would say the cast probably does know the outcome. Um, just because I feel like they would like really want to know, like after they leave the game. Um so I would say probably yes. Although like maybe like some of the people, like I'm sure like, I don't know. I don't know if like Brandy Glanville like cares at this point after uh, no. like she okay. went home week three or, or whatnot. But um, I feel like like someone like Steph, if she were to go home, like at the end, she would want to find out what happened from Suri. Um, so I guess it just depends on the person. Definitely. I want, I want, I want it all to be, I want to have seen it all so I can start like looking and see people's reactions and stuff like that. Like I want, I want more, I want more. Mm -hmm. So Shelby feels out of the loop and like, I feel bad for Shelby because I think that she probably thought that she was onto something and like just being wrong all the time, like it would be yeah. pretty frustrating. And so she's kind of sitting on her own. Ari goes and comforts her about the fact that he has children that he also left at home. Um, and he he doesn't want her to isolate herself from the group, which is true. Don't do that, Shelby. Like, sorry, these social mm -hmm. games mean you have to be social. It's, it's yeah, a couple nice it's moments sad. there with Shelby, but yeah, like. Another like one of those I, we talked about it uh, yesterday with like a few of the contestants. I think it was uh, 
Andy and someone else had uh, they were and Michael were talking about how they were like very antisocial and like they were like you got to kind of be a little social in a social game. So um, kind of same thing there with um, with Shelby. Um, so, I mean, I, I get it. Like I'm, it must suck leaving like your young kids, um, but uh, you are there partly for your kids. It's and a for job, it's a, so, you know, 10 day yeah. job. Enjoy, enjoy the couple weeks and uh, just like get to socializing so you can take that bag right take that bag get the win get your game face on um i really did like how kate was gravitating towards shelby and like they just talking about like how they're kind of on the outside but it's like kate i know that she's being kind of not kind to rachel she finds rachel annoying mm -hmm. and she's kind of rude with how she she expresses that but kate is alone in this game and people are just constantly berating her and telling her how like everything she does is that of a traitor and and she lost all of her her best friends and since the beginning she's just been a target like it's not it doesn't feel great and i understood why she didn't want to win money for the group it's like f you you guys treat me like garbage like why do i want to win money for people that are lying to me <laughs> i get it yeah so one thing can you clarify for me like is there any significance like to these challenges, like other than just building the prize pot or just building the prize pot and giving the traders a little bit of downtime of not having to be on, you know, like and have people like scrutinizing their every single word? Um, I think it just gives them a little bit of an outlet. Okay. Yeah. Cause um like some of the challenges like make sense, like, okay, you don't earn the full money, but then other ones where it's like it's you split into two teams and one team automatically wins. It's like, oh, so everyone is getting that money regardless. Mm -hmm. um, so, so those ones are more just for entertainment. The one that was in the church where they split into two teams in the UK version, that was the first time that they introduced the shield. So the winning team also won a shield there. Uh, or they, they an opportunity to go into the armory. So I don't know why they didn't do it in this version. They just had like a winning team, but it had no significance. In the UK version, mm -hmm. that win also allowed that group of people to go into the armory. So okay, that probably Makes answers sense. what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, Quinton and Christian now might be voting Shelby. Like everybody's so gullible. It's just like you say one word name and they're like, yeah, oh yeah, that's them. Let's do it. They're out. And like, they've just been oh. so wrong all the time that I just don't understand why they would still think that their first thought is right. I, I have to say, like, I am thoroughly enjoying Quentin. Um, <laughs> I find him like, and strong. his like, his poor reads are just like so hilarious where he is like so dead set on every single person. Uh, like, and every person he's wrong about. And then he's like, I know, like, I can trust Sari 100%. Like, she's the one person I can trust. I and can then trust it's like, Christian it has even. To be Kate. Yeah, it has to be Kyle. It has to be Rachel. And she's like, he's just like throwing out names that, like, it's funny for the audience because we know he's wrong. And I think the editors are like, kind of like making a bit of a joke of it as well. But I'm really liking that kind of like narrative that's going on. Well, because he's not like the dodo edit guy. Like that's Ryan Lochte. Um, yeah, he's so articulate and like has so much boom and confidence in his voice. How he just speaks that people agree with him. They believe him. They're persuaded by him. He puts together a completely logical argument, and he's just so dead ass wrong <laughs> it's like yeah man can't get honestly like wrong than quentin i i'm surprised that more people aren't accusing him of being a traitor just because he is like so vocal and like he's always wrong like if i were in there i would be very suspect of him um i i mean but, i uh, see where you're coming but i just because he, he's so i feel like he's so honest that I just don't think that like that would be just expert beyond expert level of traitor. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I guess that's true. But like, yeah, really, it's just, like, like I'm, I'm seen, really like that would be so expert. Yeah, I just think like anyone, like I would be suspicious of anyone that's like acting differently than everyone else. So like someone like I, I like not like not like Kate, like obviously Kate's acting different, but she's more like acting out because like, she's just like trying to make like good TV. Like she's trying to uh, cause chaos and she's just like sick of the fact that she's like the target every week. Yes. Um, but like a lot of the people that are like hiding, they're like hiding in the shadows. Uh, I guess like they're suspicious in a way too, but like Quentin, like putting the blame on other people very often Okay. Um, maybe he's that's maybe that's just how he's playing the game and how he um, like obviously he's not a traitor so he is just like naturally doing that but I, I feel like I would be a little uh, sketched out by it if I was in there I mean I, I would be but I would probably do a, some sort of test to see like how to, to determine whether or not he was a traitor so like I don't know. I'd maybe like try to like get like a vote of some sort to go a certain way to see if he's protecting a certain person. Like, I don't know. I think that I would do something to see if I could figure out if he was a traitor or not. And I feel like they probably know that he's not from the way that he's been voting and stuff. Do you think there's any rules about stuff like that? Where like, obviously when you're at the table, like doing the interrogations, like everyone is like, kind of like, getting like speaking their mind but are you like allowed to like would you say like would three people be allowed to like corner someone in the mansion and just be like hey like we're interrogating you right now like are you a traitor like uh, and like try to like pry info out of them is that something that's okay in the game i think so i mean we we see a lot of people often saying like "Are, are you a traitor no, I'm a faithful. Like I've seen it happen before. We even hear in episode eight, Rachel being like to Shelby, or maybe it's this episode. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. Um, it's like convince me now that you're not a traitor. And so I think that they could have probably have done that um in the mansion, but I think that it's actually more effective in the the banishment room because then they can't use that against you. You know what I mean? Like if you quarter somebody and then be like, Oh my God, I was just quartered by so-and-so like they're probably, they're probably doing that to make it look like I'm a traitor. You know what I mean? Like they have time to wiggle out of it. Yeah. The only issue though, that I was thinking with that is um, it's very hard in like any, like any show. And I'm sure this is no difference to like change people's votes last minute. Uh, so I, I imagine when they're going to like vote someone to vote for someone to be banished, they kind of like for the most part already know who they're banishing before they have mm-hmm. that meeting, mm-hmm. uh, like similar to like a tribal council or like on a, a big brother eviction. But um, I like I think like the one pro to potentially try to like interrogate someone earlier would just be to swing votes your way for like that specific vote. Yeah. Um, but um. Yeah, I mean, it's like an interesting, like, I, I don't know, maybe like in the future, like it's something people will try. Like, I'm surprised if people are doing that and interrogating people just all throughout the day. I'm surprised Christian hasn't been like fully caught at this point, because it right. seems like you'd be able to, he'd have like an easy tell that he's a traitor if he was cornered and like really like well, question. It be that whole reality TV scenario where you can't really have a conversation with somebody unless there's a camera. So hmm. maybe that's also might be a thing i don't know i'm not sure i'm not sure i'd have to that's kind of one of the reasons why i want to go on one of these shows just to know really how the sausage is made you know what i mean i want to have an idea of like how why why did this not happen (laughs) you know like you're like what like in in the circle for instance like why didn't they have that conversation well now I'm, i'm learning that they only have a few conversations every single day and they have to like decide in like the morning who they want to talk to and they can talk to like i don't know three people so there's going to be probably similar rules to that i would say like even on love Mm -hmm. island you can't have a a chat with your significant other because it's not your time to have that discussion you know yeah yeah and i like survivor too it's like there's like a hour-long drive to tribal council where like nobody can talk so um there's like all these things that like you don't obviously see on TV, but uh, you gotta you gotta be there. So um, once you get on one of these shows, you'll have to uh, give me the deets on what it's really like. 
<laughs> yes, yes, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> so for the mission, we hear Alan screaming. The former player spirits have made a mess of his billiard room. And I really do love Fergus. Fergus is this is the first time we've had a Fergus in any of the seasons that I've watched. Um, and he's great. Like, Fergus is just <laughs> hanging out everywhere um i think he's a fun little addition i think that's probably alan's idea um but yeah i think it's hilarious so they're gonna be put into three groups um one group is kate shelby and stephanie the next group is rachel sari and andy and the third group is ari quinton and christian so basically each group is going to go into the messy billiards room and they are going to study what's happening in this room where things are positioned what's where and then all of a sudden the lights are going to go turn off and a couple of things are going to be switched so each team will have three items that are switched or changed or moved um while the lights are off and they have to figure out what they are and so for one item that they get correct is a thousand dollars if they get two items get correct, two it's $5,000 item. and three items is $10,000. So a potential of $30,000 can be won by these three teams. Uh, so what do you think about this uh, task? Oh, and also whichever team wins the most money will also get uh, a pass to the armory to potentially win a shield. Um, yeah, I, I thought, uh, I thought this was, <clears throat> kind of cool like i liked like i liked the format there uh it was kind of like one of those things though like you blink and you miss it like from a viewer side of things like i i'll look away for half a second and then like i look back and it's like okay i don't i didn't see what was going on so i'm just kind of like waiting it out to see like who got what right right um I mean, I loved like the uh, first group, uh, the Shelby, Steph, and Kate group, where like <laughs> Kate didn't care. Steph was mad that Kate didn't care, and then it turned out like Steph was wrong as well. Um, I, I really enjoyed so I liked that. that because as much as I like Stephanie, um, I mean, I like Stephanie on her first season of Survivor. Uh, she's a little bit annoying with how like kind of self righteous she is about like gamesmanship, like. Granted, like, I don't like cheating. I want people to play their hardest. Absolutely. But she's a little bit arrogant with, like, she's, like, so good at playing a game. And, like, Kate is terrible. And then, like, and then she dropped the ball. So it's just kind of, like, eye roll a little bit. Stephanie. Yeah, Steph is, like, very, uh, Stephanie's very, like, old school mentality. Like, it's, like, when those old school players come back to play, like, new school Survivor and, like, mm. it just doesn't hit the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I, I loved Stephanie on Palau as well. I think everyone did, obviously. But, um, yeah, like, you come back, like, 15 years later and um, the, like, scope of reality TV has changed where it's, like, much more about, like, the twists and, like, the entertainment, less about, like, the, like, honesty and... Um, honesty and like and things like that so it's like kate is like the kate is the presence that like we for the most part want to see as fans um and like it is like obviously nice to see someone like stephanie like pop pop up after this long um but uh yeah a little bit like arrogant a little bit too old school for uh for my liking um but uh i, I mean again like i was happy to see her like show yeah, up on a sure. tv show so speaking of Stephanie, I, this just popped in my head. Do you think there's a chance that Stephanie knows that Suri is the traitor and she's keeping her lips sealed, kind of like how she did with Cody until it's time to strike, maybe at the very end and just takes her out and wins the game? I don't see it. I think if if Steph does, if she is on to Suri... I think it might, it must be like very, like, re like very much like in the last couple episodes, just because like, even in episode four and five, like Steph was consistently going to Suri and uh, like giving her information. Whereas like, yeah, maybe that could be strategy, but um, I don't think Stephanie is like thinking, like, I don't think she's thinking like three dimensionally like that. Like, I don't think she's thinking three steps ahead. So maybe it's possible that uh, she is a little bit worried about Suri. Um, I just don't, I don't know. Like I, I don't see her getting one up on Suri here. I think, uh, 
I, I, I can't see it. I think if anyone was going to, I think it would, would have been Rachel. Rachel. Right. And, uh, but at this point, I think, uh, I'd be pretty surprised if Sari doesn't win this thing, to be honest. I don't know. How, how do you feel? Like, do you think she'll get caught? Um, at this point, no, but no. we still have two full episodes to watch. And so it gets a little bit sticky little bit when you get closer to the money because everybody is becoming a little more desperate. Uh, traders sometimes are becoming a little more greedy, a little bit sloppier. Like, you know what I mean? So it gets, it does get amped up and it's possible that people might just take a risk. Right. So I, right now, yes, I think that Sari looks like she could win, but I could see things just go awry and she gets, you know, taken out. You know what I mean? So I, it's hard to say. I want Sari to win. Yeah. I think she's played a phenomenal game, phenomenal. but I'm not sure. 100%. Not sure. 100%. Yeah. So the only teams that won any money was Stephanie, Kate, and Shelby. They got one item correct, so they won $1,000. Rachel, Sari, and Andy, $0. Yikes. And the boys also only got one right, so another $1,000. So because the boys locked it in faster than the first group did, they yeah. will be receiving a pass to the armory, armory, which they showed right away. So Christian goes in first, he goes in first and nope, and he did not nope, get the shield. Ari goes in second, and for the second for the second time, he gets the shield. And Quinton, obviously, we know that he did not receive the shield because Ari did. Uh, Stephanie and Shelby. Um, wait, Steph, is Shelby and Kate discussing. Wait, Sari wanted to be a traitor. Oh yeah, okay. So Stephanie tells Shelby and Kate that Sari wanted to be a traitor and was really disappointed that she didn't get to be a traitor. What do you think about what Stephanie think about sharing this information as a reason for Sari to be exonerated? Yeah, I was so confused by that. I mean, it's like, why? Like, I'm sure like they're all talking like all day long. And it's like, if someone says, like if Sari was saying... Well, yeah, like it would be so fun to be a trader. Like, yeah, no kidding. It would be like incredibly fun. So I was confused like why this became like a big thing. Um where um and sorry, it was so it was Shelby. Shelby had told Steph that Sari had said that, or, or I Steph think told Steph Shelby. told Shelby, and then Shelby tells Andy, and then Andy tells Sari. And Sari is pissed about it, but Shelby's like, hold it till the to the round table, the banishment table. Um, yeah, I didn't understand why it was like such a big deal for someone to say that. Um, unless like she was thinking like, oh, like it was kind of sus that Sari mentioned that out of nowhere. Uh, but like it seems like something that I mean, I feel like everyone would be thinking and potentially saying. Uh Oh, well, I think that nobody has been thinking of tr of Sari having the the chutzpah to be able to be a traitor. Like, I, I guess they just don't know her at all. But, like, I think that she's so faithful. Like, why would she ever want to be a traitor? I think it's that element. It's like, well, what about Sari? Do I not know that makes her want to be a traitor? Like, I think that that's the element is that. Oh, like that. Like, so they don't know that. Yeah. They don't know she has like that devious side to her where like she's the gangster in an Oprah suit. So um, <laughs> they don't uh, they don't know that about her unless like, I mean, How I'm do you sure not know that about Stephanie her? knows. But... She was so upset that she didn't get to be the snake for snake in the grass. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. she's definitely. Yeah. Who said that line before Um, the. Oprah and a gangster, or gangster in no pursuit. Three said that. Oh, she said it. Okay, yeah. I, I just remember yeah, hearing yeah. it. I just remember where it came from. But yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, yeah. That's like, uh, yeah, Sari said that about herself um, back in the day. Uh, but yeah, like Sari, probably. Like, obviously, like, was on the hero tribe, is like one of the true heroes of Survivor. But that's not to say, like, she doesn't have, like, some villain to her. She's Like, villain. she's definitely known to uh, make a pretty, like, conniving move or two so um yeah i guess like 
people that just know her by reputation don't know that and they just like see her as like the sweet like motherly role she but, got off uh, the couch to go on survivor yeah 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 um, she's like the inspiration but like there is like so many different sides of her that's like unless you're a true fan so cut like, if we were there like we would know what she's capable of but uh, not everyone does at all i mean she she's really great with bringing in people to really be in her spell she's good at yeah. that really good at that so at the banishment sari addresses the issue and she's just like i'm a faithful like i would never say that i didn't say that and i was wondering if if stephanie would be like why is she getting so defensive over that she did say that and be like maybe she is a traitor you know what i mean that was one of the reasons why i was kind of thinking that maybe stephanie might get tipped off but that it's sari is that moment mm -hmm. but i don't think she would say anything yeah maybe she would rather sari win money than like get her out i would think yeah so, so, so right, sorry, at the what? end um at the end like how how many trade or sorry how many um how many people are potentially eligible to win money at the end? Like, obviously, like, technically, there could be one trader, but... If there's um, one trader, the trader takes all. Two traders, yeah. traders split. Um, if there's no traders, whatever ban it, whatever um, faithfuls are left, they split it. So I think... So what's, like, how many faithfuls could, maybe like, three theoretically be left? Okay. It, I, I, yeah, so I think maybe four max because basically okay. they can they can still i haven't seen it happen yet but they can banish until like they can even know that they're banishing faithfuls and being like let's do another banishment ceremony if two people want to maybe split the money you know no mm -hmm. so okay. i guess it would have to be that at least two people have to be left yeah yeah, I'm. Um, I mean, at the like, there can't be any less than two people left. Always. Yeah, because that once it gets to two, like they know, like both parties, like know that they're uh, like who they are, right? So, but not if, necessarily um, each other, though, right? Well, if like say it was like Steph, Stephanie, and Sari, and like, would they know that one of like would they tell them like one? No, of they you, would think they're like, both faithfuls. Of, Oh, so Stephanie like could potentially say like, all right, I'm going to like vote for another uh, faithful and then keep Siri and then Siri like pulls the wool over her and Siri just wins everything on her own at that right. point. Right. Ah, uh, so, okay. Um, it, it, like, it can, the furthest it can go down is to two people yeah. left and it's either two, two traders, two faithfuls or a faithful and a trader is basically all the outcome. Uh -huh. So most likely a trader would win in a final two situation most likely if, yeah. if there there's three of them still left there are two of them right now left in the game right like now, yeah the game, like... they're they, the odds are strong that at least one faithful or one trader will be in the end so rachel mm -hmm. wants shelby to convince her that she's not a trader and like i think shelby had the right response being like well what do you what have i done that makes you think that i am a trader and maybe i'll start there because i'm not a trader so so, I don't know how to convince you that I'm not a traitor, but since my word isn't enough. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's tough because like we don't, we haven't like seen anything that really like, like would paint Shelby as a target. But uh, I mean, we're like only seeing like the edited version. Plus, like we know who the traitors are. So like to us, it's like yeah, like I mean, what has Shelby done? But I'm sure like the people in the mansion are just like their heads are spinning. So. Like to them, like everyone is probably a suspect. Uh, but yeah, I kind of like, I kind of agreed with Shelby. Like, what, what can I say? Like, I'm not yeah, like, a faithful. What, like, what do you want me to prove? Yeah. And it's also like, you ask anyone in the house if they're a faithful, like they're going to say yes. So like, what more can I say? If you don't trust me, you don't trust me. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to beg, right? No, not going to beg, not going to beg at all so the votes are up well kate thinks that she's going to be taking one for shelby but no 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 uh, the house has turned on kate or they decided to go for shelby so kate does still do rachel which i'm like i don't think that kate actually thinks that rachel's a traitor because because like 
Rachel also is not acting, in my opinion, like a traitor. I think Kate just really doesn't like her. Um, Andy, Shelby. Ari, Shelby. Christian, Shelby. Shelby goes for Steph. Steph goes for Shelby. Rachel, Shelby. Quinton, with his good reads. Shelby. Siri. Siri, Shelby. Shelby goes up there. And like most people, I'm a faithful. She did also say, I wanted to let you know, I'm not a teacher. Oh, that's uh, true. I can't, what was what was her real profession? Uh, PR, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm not a, I'm not an elementary school teacher. Um, I'm in PR and I just like, I didn't want you guys to know that because I didn't want uh, people to suspect me. It's like, oh, And I'm then they're like, kind of... but I am a faithful yeah so everybody feels really bad they're like and kate just like loves throwing salt into the wound she's like yeah great job guys you sent home a single mom <laughs> she said the click decided to kick a to kick out the single mom she said uh, which i did kind of like because like yeah i mean a lot of these games do get very like cliquey so to like call it out and um call it out it's like another like hilarious kate moment there um and i think ari said ari called kate like a cancer in the house um so yeah it seems like people are really not digging kate it's like yeah, but it's, it's because been... of like the group think right like i mean she yeah. is being annoying but like i would still be friends mm -hmm. with kate you know what i mean like if i was in that game, I was in that game kate and i would be buds i would be buds yeah oh yeah i'd be buds with kate too like obviously, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't think that the Rachel Steph Ari is the cool group. <laughs> like, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't want to hang out with Ari much. He's, <laughs> Ari seems like kind of lame. Yeah, like he's okay, but like, I I wouldn't be hanging out with him. I would be hanging out yeah. with Kate, probably. Yeah, it would, for me, it would yeah. just be like. If, if i'm in the house just like as like a normal like as myself and uh, i'm not a reality star and i see ari there like first thing i'm doing it's like why did you do that to becca yeah. come on ari. come on ari like tell me what were you thinking <laughs> i um, want to know like how that went them. down because that was pretty trash trash yeah. i tell you trash that's uh, a man Quentin i would not is trust. heartbroken sorry what'd you say that's a man I would not trust in there. Just like based off based off his past, I ain't trusting him for nothing. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Quinton and his bad reads is heartbroken. Uh, Andy feels guilty. Sari is also crying and really apologizing out loud, like to herself, but out loud to Shelby. Um, I mean, I, I think that she did have a connection to Shelby and she wants to win this game and it sucks that, you know, people with stories that you like and get along with are going to have to go are home if you want to win. So it does get tougher as you near the end of the game because you're getting to know these people and their stories a lot more. So I feel for Suri, but she'll get over it. <laughs> yeah, 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 she'll be good. So most of the group is outside and they're all talking and then Kate shows up. and Oh no, Kate's still there and they all just leave Kate sitting there by herself. And I'm like, regardless of how much you don't like Kate, that is kind of bullying and like group mentality and mean girls. -y. Like, I know you think that she's horrible, but they are kind of mean girling her, you know? Yeah. Um, I definitely, I would, I would be defending Kate for sure. So Ari feels relaxed, obviously going to sleep because he has the shield. Um, uh, so, okay, I put a star beside, get to the end with or without Christian. Did Sari say that? Yeah, yeah, I, I actually wrote that down too. Sari did say, I think it was in a confessional, she's like, no matter what, like, I have to get to the end, she's like, with or without Christian. So then I was thinking, like, all right, like, she's already taken out Cody. Now it's just her and Christian, because this was before, like, they knew that they were going to add another. Like, oh, is she going to, like, try to do this solo? Um, Because I, I had no idea there was, like, they were going to add a third. Like, I guess, like, you probably suspected they were going to add a new trader. Um, Yeah, so I didn't I didn't suspect that at this point. So I was just like, oh, damn, like, Sari is just going to, like, single-handedly do this. Um, 
But I do think, like, I mean, it's definitely setting up. Like, Christian is definitely going to be uh, a target. And, like, when we get to the next episode, we'll, like, he is definitely not long for this game. Like, I no. think, like, well, long, but he's not a goner. Until the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's only, I guess, two episodes after. Uh, but uh, he is not making it to the end. There's no way. No, I don't think so. I don't think he'll make it after a past episode nine. Yeah. So the traders meet up, Steph, uh, um, Sari and Christian, and then we hear a knock, knock, knock on the door, and it is Alan, and he gives them a piece of paper, and they can recruit someone if they choose to. Uh, so if you were to recruit at this point at the game, who do you think you would have recruited? Uh, yeah, I mean... What I was saying when we were chatting yesterday is like I would go for like someone that's like easily easy to influence. Like if like just looking at it from Sari's point of view. Um, so I was thinking like maybe a Andy, but the problem is I don't know if uh, I don't know if they would um be willing to become a trader. Um, because they're like a little bit more like a little bit more emotional with the way that they're playing. Uh, I think Ari ultimately like pretty good choice. Uh, looking at the rest of the list, yeah, I mean, I think Ari, I think Ari's the right choice there. I think a lot of the others would be either they already carry like too much of a target, mm -hmm. or uh, they just like straight up would not do it. Like you can't bring in Kate, you can't bring in Rachel. I think Stephanie is someone that probably says no, and like I don't think she'd be good. And Sari knows that from Snake in the Grass, right? Yeah, Quentin, Quentin would I would change not how do. he's acting in a second. Um, yeah, I would I love for Andy at... to be able to be in that position, but they, as you said, are way too emotional, and yeah. everything weighs on them pretty heavy. And so, I don't think the weight of being a traitor would be something that they would accept at all. Yeah. So I, I was surprised that Irvy like... was the right choice, though. I was like, hmm, actually, that is the pick. The pick. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think Ari is the pick. I think, like, if you're not doing Ari, like, you take the shot on Andy. And if Andy says no, they say no. And it's like, whatever. Uh, is there a question for you? Like, is there any, is there any um, reason for Sari and Christian to want to bring in a third trader that does have a huge target on them? Like, would it make sense to like have Kate be a third trader and then like she already has this target and they can just throw her to the wolves after, or do you think it's too risky? I think it's too, I think it's too risky with the Kate thing because she, she seems to be such a loose cannon, right? Like she's so mad at the traders for like, lying to her face this whole time like, i just don't think that she'd be able to do it um i think she it would have been different if she was a traitor from the beginning i just don't know if she would be a good person with her experience this season to be recruited she's just too jaded already she's too miserable i think she just wants to get to the end and hope for the best at this point but um i just don't think that i think i think that she would blow their cover before they could use her to, yeah. to banish yeah. So yeah, in that case, if it's like if you don't want like someone like that um to kind of throw to the wolves, like I think like Ari is like a natural choice. Like he's very he is kind of like a Cody. Like he honestly is like he's, replacing I Cody. Think he's there. playing it better than Cody, to be honest. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I mean he got helped a lot by what Christian did in the next the next morning. So um I think uh, <laughs> that's that really true, him. actually. Yeah. So um <laughs> But they're like that same archetype. Like they're just like the kind of like uh the like like chill, like broy kind of guy. Like Cody's a little bit more broy than Ari, I'd say. But um way more. Yeah, I think like and I think Ari is a little bit more easy to influence than Cody would be for a Sari as well. Uh yes, I yeah, I can see that. Um, because well, especially because Ari really trusts Sari. So Ari is definitely being tormented by this decision. Um, I mean, if you get asked to be a traitor, you say yes right away and have to just deal with that rule. I would not say I would never turn down them asking me to be a traitor. I, I would use that because like being asked to be a traitor after they've done all this work for these last like 
so many banishments, so many murders. Like it's a, a prime position to come in in the end and get to like they have all the trust that they build up this whole time as being an actual faithful you know how you act as a faithful now so you can come in and be a faithful with now knowing that you are a traitor i think it's a it's a perfect position to be able to come in and win in the end so yeah i would say yes yes Yes, especially knowing that there's more traders in the game and you've only got out one. Like right now, as the, as the numbers dwindle, the it's traders still, are becoming more powerful. Becoming so I would say yes in a freaking second. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. And I mean, Ari made a good point at the start of the next step where he said, um, he like straight up said, like, if I don't accept, like, they're probably just going to murder me. So like, I kind of have to accept here, which like, made sense to that's that's what i was thinking too it's like yeah if you don't accept like you're kind of screwed regardless so you might as well just do it and um uh, and like enjoy like have more information good position. yeah like, you got the information like you're positioned well and uh you don't get murdered so you don't get murdered and you get to strategize on how you get to win instead of being on the defensive mode right so mm -hmm. I would say yes in a second. And Ari eventually does come and he meets the other two traders, which was a really fun moment. I, I actually was pretty excited about that moment. It was, I was, mm -hmm. yeah, I was in good spirits. So yeah. breakfast time and Kate, I believe is in there first and Kate, uh, Andy and Sari come in at the same time. And, <laughs> and Kate was what way more excited to see Andy than she was to see Sari, which Sari clocked her on. She's like, you weren't that excited to see me. <laughs> I thought it was funny, but I think Kate mm -hmm. like is playing a up a little bit, this like curmudgeon like, like sourpuss like, old lady sourpuss kind of role. Like, like She's, yeah, definitely. She's fun and likable at times. Like you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And she, people do like, do like her, even though she's being miserable. And she gave I, Rachel a compliment. Did you notice this? She's like, oh, I like your outfit today. Yeah, but didn't they start arguing, like, right after that? Um, I don't. <clears throat> not right after, I guess. I don't remember, though. Oh, uh, <clears throat> might have been a bit later. Yeah, maybe it was later on. I put in my notes. Oh, were, like, wait, well, I wrote traders everyone. are greedy liars. No, they're not. It's just a game. What's that? That's what Andy was. Andy saying that that's what Rachel said. Yeah, I, I think remember. so. I didn't write it down. So now they're deducing that because Rachel and Cody argued and, and Rachel are, and Kate are now arguing that they must be traitors. So Rachel and Kate are the traitors now before it was shelby and kate are the traitors now it's rachel and kate are rachel the traitors ari comes in uh stephanie they think would be wild if stephanie was going to be murdered um and it's especially since kate is there like it's like whoa wow this is wild this is well so then christian i don't know what he was thinking there he was drinking the Wait, same sorry sorry before we get to that, yeah. I, I, one thing really confused me. Yeah. So Ari came in and then they, everyone was like, oh, Stephanie's murdered. And then Stephanie came in and they said, oh, I guess Ari was murdered, but he had like the, the um, shield. safety, the shield. But why was nobody murdered that morning? Like why? Because like, someone recruited. <laughs> so when someone was recruited, they don't get murdered. Nobody gets murdered. He, in the other series, um, the butler person mentions that that somebody was. So recruited. what would have happened? What would have happened if someone was recruited that didn't have the shield? Well, that's what I like. Th that's what I'm saying is that they allowed that to be the de de deduction that Ari had the shield, so maybe he was the person that was going to be murdered. But in the other series, other series, the Allen person, the Allen person said person. someone was recruited. There was no murder. Oh, okay. So I guess like if Ari didn't have the shield, they might have done that as well. Right and, like they would have known there was another uh, a third, a third traitor. Yeah, I was so confused by that because I like fully thought like Stephanie was just gone, and they were going to show the flashback to them removing Stephanie, and I was so confused because I didn't think Sari would want stephanie out at this point um 
and then like they yeah then they alluded to that but um okay that that makes a lot of sense if they if that like if the recruitment is like in place of the murder um yes okay, it's, in, cool. it's in place cool, cool. so uh, your guy christian has something to tell the group and i was thinking in my head i'm like what is he gonna tell them like i actually had no idea what on earth he was gonna say to them and he says after the last round table I was recruited to be a traitor, but I turned it down. This is exactly what Cody said. Like, like, oh, like, what is he? Why? Explain to me, Matthew. I don't understand. Why did this man say this? So I first thought, like, when he was saying that, I first thought, like, okay, this is, like, a plan that was come up with the night before. And I'm like, okay, like, there's, like, this a big elaborate plan where they're going to, like, say that it was they're going to say that uh, he was recruited that way. Like, all right, the target is on like Sari already wants Christian out. So I was thinking like Sari is like going to pull a fast one on this poor kid and he's going to like screw himself. But then like it, it flipped to Ari who was like confused and confessional. Like, what is he saying? And then Sari too, like had no idea he was going to do it. And then Christian is in confessional <laughs> and he's saying like, I came up with this idea overnight and like, I'm going to say it was me. I guess, like, the only thing I can think of that makes sense is he was trying to take away, like, Shine. some of Ari's leverage, maybe. Like, now Ari can't, like, claim this for himself because, like, no way this happened to two people. Um, that was the only thing I could think of. But, like, such, like, a weird move to just, like, paint a massive target on you. And then also, like, you lose trust with the other traders. So, just a... Oh completely horrible move especially considering he didn't run it by the other two traders and nobody bought it not one no. person bought it they're just like why would he say that so he must have been a traitor all along <laughs> like <laughs> they're just like yeah also the other the other um the other players don't know that this twist is even happening so he just put the twist into their head and it's like well we've never heard of this twist so like it must be like true. And like, if it's true, like maybe he accepted it and just wants us to think that he didn't. Or again, like he just made it up altogether. So it's like not, nothing good can come from this lie. Unless um, they didn't show us. And maybe Alan did say one of you has been recruited and then they didn't show that part. And then maybe he's claiming that, okay, well I was recruited. Um, you know what I mean? So maybe they just cut out the other stuff. But I feel like that's something they would want to show now. It would be kind of weird for them not to show it. I, in my opinion, at least, because uh, it's like pretty significant to the story. Right. And like, I would imagine if Alan did say that, like there would be a lot of speculation on to as to. Well, I still who, think it's weird, like, though, that they didn't tell the group that there was a recruitment. Yeah. In so, the UK version, do they tell them that there is yeah. a. Oh, okay. And in the Australian, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I think it's strange that they didn't mention that. And then he does just says this out of the blue. So I'm wondering if they just so didn't I'm show that to make it make seems it a little bit more like wild. Yeah. May yeah. Maybe it's like, maybe it's kind of like setting the, setting the table for like the downfall of Christian. And it's just like better TV this way. Yeah. Um, which like, yeah, like game move, like think it was pretty horrible, but like TV move, I thought it was pretty, uh, pretty amazing. So pretty I'll take awesome. the TV move over the game move. Uh, yeah, in this thanks. Case. But from that guy, like from that someone guy. that's most likely yeah. not going to win. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Ari, Rachel and Ari, Steph um, discuss uh, if, if Christian was a traitor all along and that uh, it, it's just like, you don't want people discussing whether or not you're a traitor. So you just don't ever want your name to be in the same sentence as traitor or murdered or, you know, any of those things. And so the fact that he just put himself in as a topic of conversation around whether or not he actually is a traitor or not, like, is just so dumb because then people are just going to start thinking of every single thing that you've done this entire season and put it through the traitor filter you know mm -hmm. so so silly but quentin is back to rachel and kate being a traitor he does not believe that it's christian i'm just like 
guy, Quentin. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and it's not even Rachel or Kate. It's like, no, it has to be Rachel and Kate. It's like, do you not see these two like getting almost like violently aggressive with each other? Like they're like coming the whole season. They're like close to like getting into like a fight. It yeah. seems. Um, there is no way in hell that both of them are traitors. Like no. they would have to be the best actors ever. Like these are reality stars. Like they're not actors. Uh, they do not like each other. Like other. And like if they were traitors together and they knew it, like they would have to be a little bit more cordial just based on the nature of the game. Um, so the fact that like, again, this is like, this is why I love Quentin. It's just like, he's like so sure of like the most like ridiculous takes. Um, so when he said that, I was like, come on, Quentin, really, really, man, Rachel. Back to and them. After, after Christian says, I, I was recruited, but I turned it down. Like, yeah. <laughs> nobody asked you for that information. Wild. Christian never offer extra information. Or it's a lie. Like that's like mm -hmm. like lying 101 is like you don't give more information that people didn't ask for. So like yeah. who, who was I was in Big Brother Canada and I think it was Jess that was lying um about a conversation that um Summer had with with uh the head of whoever the head of household was at the time and was it was it Kyle? I can't remember. And they said something that was so specific that I remember, like, I ate this Wendy's fry and it reminded me of, like, something. Like, it was just such a specific thing that had nothing to do with whatever was the truth of this, the story. And I was like, well, she's obviously lying because we didn't need to know that information about, like, loving your fries or whatever it was. And this yeah. is a similar situation. Like, from what we've seen, nobody asked you, Christian, about whether or not you were recruited or not so why are you offering up that information up unless that it's a falsity it's and you're trying to make us mm -hmm. believe something that doesn't actually exactly. exist doesn't actually right that's just me that's just me that's just me so quentin says i'm a faithful Sri says i'm a faithful and andy says i'm a faithful as they speculate about it being rachel and kate i'm like Sri, you're just leading these poor people to slaughter i can't wait to see how shocked they're gonna be in the end be very mm -hmm. exciting. So Sari does want to warn Rachel that people are on to her. Um, Ari and Christian also want to get out Rachel just because Rachel, Rachel, because Rachel is definitely going to be somebody, somebody that uh, is going to figure out Christian and could potentially get the troops rallied together to say like, hey, Christian is sketch. So they want Rachel out. Um, so when Sari does talk to Rachel, um, and tells her to talk to Andy because Andy's also somebody that is questioning Rachel at this time Rachel because of the time. influential because Quentin is, is giving his two cents. Ugh. So Rachel does have to go and talk to Andy and she does. And, and Andy does say that it's really hard for them, hard for them. Uh, being in this position. And I thought that Rachel handled it pretty well, but didn't, in my opinion, wasn't very convincing. But she wasn't super she defensive, wasn't super which she does get sometimes. So I thought she handled it in the best way that Rachel best way that Canna Rachel. could. Canna could. Yeah. yeah. So we have the mission. They're going to be put into two groups of four, and they're going to have to solve different cabins or puzzles in our two puzzles different cabins. Two different cabins. Uh, the blue group is group one. So that's Kate, Quentin, Sari, and Christian. Group two is green, and that's Ari, Rachel, Andy, and Steph. And so the fastest group to escape is going to get an opportunity to go to the armory and potentially win a shield. So they have 30 minutes, and... I really wasn't paying much attention about what the actual what the riddle actual puzzles to solve was because I was just gagging for the amount of maggots and patches Bugs, and, yeah. and whatever they were dumping on these poor souls. Yeah, and I was very surprised that Kate actually put her head into the container. I thought she was going to for sure say, like, screw you guys, I'm not doing it. Um, but I guess yeah, kudos to her. Like as she gets closer to the end game, maybe like she sees like maybe you know what maybe I do have a chance at this money. So maybe it's better that I do uh, put my head in there and not like 
act out as much. Well, um, I mean, what I she has like a that. one in how many people are left? Eight shot at winning two hundred fifty thousand yeah, dollars. Like maybe since the, they keep on not banishing her and they keep on not murdering her, maybe she can get to the end and actually win. So maybe, yeah, yeah maybe she's just seen the money. It's close. Mm -hmm. Very, very. Yeah, close. so she's like willing to, uh, willing to get down and dirty there, but. Uh... Yeah, I also like wasn't really paying close attention to like the riddles there. I was just like, I was just watching the like fear factor of it all, um, which I do think Rachel has some experience with. So yes. um, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, kind of I would do all these things, but there. like, it's so gross. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I, I would do that. I would do it. So it would, I just wouldn't, would wouldn't be fine. I would do it. do it. Say again. Yeah. Would not be fine, but I would do it as well. Right. Uh, Same. I'd rather this than like the Ferris wheel thing that they were doing. Oh, really? Like, oh, right. You don't like heights. Yeah. Um, yeah, it didn't even look that then? high, but like roller coasters I can do. It's just the, I don't like like, I don't, I can't do Ferris wheels. Like I, I can't do like where you're stuck at the top for like 30 <laughs> seconds. Uh, that like all like hyperventilates, but like roller coasters, I don't mind like, I don't mind it because it's very fast moving um so i can do that but uh not ferris wheels oh you poor dears with this high <laughs> fear of heights thing that sucks so andy definitely was not liking all the bugs and was freaking out for the most part but both teams do still manage to escape um but the green team was the one that actually finished the riddle puzzles whatever the fastest so they will be going to the armory and collectively they were to, able to accrue thirty five thousand dollars which is a nice chunk of change that's a yeah it seems like that that was the highest amount i mean i want somebody mission, for right? those maggots please yeah that's true very true it's just disgusting uh, so the green car that was the winning car, they're all thinking, Kate, I'm just like, guys, like, <laughs> you have to realize that the traitors are going to let you go down the wrong path. Right? Yeah. Like, and it's, it's over and over, like, Rachel, Rachel wants Kate out. Uh, do you think Kate only wants Rachel out because she doesn't like Rachel? Or do you think Kate actually thinks Rachel is a traitor? I mean, I think that it started off with her not liking her and just was like, I, I don't even care if she's a traitor or not. Like, I don't like her. She's annoying. And then maybe now, though, that she now keeps on sticking she... around and she doesn't get murdered, that I think she was more starting to believe it. But I don't think she started off believing it. Started off believing it. Right. What am I yeah, talking I agree about? With so, that. say again. I agree with that. I agree with what you said. I think I, I think Kate, like initially, it was more of like the pettiness and then it turned into like oh you know what she, like rachel is like really actively coming after me so now i think like she is probably a traitor and just like trying to like find a scapegoat um so yeah i, I agree with that there um so i wrote down rachel with ari and christian and then kate something and i don't know what i wrote i can't read my writing um potential maybe maybe kate but maybe that's what they're thinking that kate is who they're gonna vote for maybe I wrote yeah potential. that was when they were in the car i think and Still? rachel okay. said like we have to make yeah oh make right that's the other car the right yeah. yeah so andy is having a hard time um with um, with everything that's going on and that's what i just don't understand is why they pick people that are going to have such a hard time with this. Um, that's what we kind of missed in the beginning is that interview um, with the host where they talk about whether they not or not they would like to be a traitor and if they'd be a good traitor. And, and I just feel like if they had this conversation with all the newbies this season, none of them would want to be a traitor. And you kind of want everybody to want to be a traitor to, for them to be able to handle it. Yeah. Because it, it doesn't yeah, feel good for me to see them break down all the time about, like, how hard it is for them. Yeah, I yeah. would have liked to see, like, more pregame press as well. Like, like, like what you're saying there, like, just to kind of, like, like a, a little interview. A little, like, we obviously had, like, the Rob has a podcast, like, stuff. But that was after they had already filmed. So, so you could ask, you could ask, like, hey, Sari, like, did you want to be a trader? And it's like, well, she already 
played the game. Like she already knows. So uh, I would have liked to see a little bit beforehand if they do like Actually. one of those like, yeah, like a challenge esque like pre special where it's like meet the cast and it's like give us like five minutes on everyone and um, they could have used that here because there are so many new faces. And I like, love that. I'm sure a lot of the people watching are like a lot of like Survivor fans are watching because Sari and Steph are here. A lot of Big Brother fans are kind of tuning in because Cody and uh, Rachel are here. So it would have been nice to like introduce people to the other reality stars and then the random like civilians um, as well. So I think like, yeah, if they do a season two, like I'd love to see that, even if it is just like a free show special or something. I would love that. Another thing that we were tossing around, Jonathan and I, was wouldn't it be great if episode one that we didn't know who the traitor was? So like maybe you'd see the shoulder tap, but you wouldn't see whose face it was or whose head it was. And so for the first mm -hmm. episode, until you see them actually go and meet up the traitors for the first time, you have no idea who the traitors are. And so you can at least for the first episode play along with like, okay, who's oh, acting differently? Who might be giving a tell? And I, I would, I wouldn't mind uh, playing along for the first episode. And then I don't, I like knowing who it is. It's fine. It works for me, but it'd be nice to get the chance to see if you could detect a traitor with what they, how they act right after they're, they're announced. Well, not announced, but Indeed. chosen. Yeah, I don't. I was thinking about that as well. Like, what I'd prefer, like, at what point in the show would I want to know who the traitors are? I just think it's tough with like in a heavily edited show where they can just like easily like trick you, um, and like they can do they, like they choose what to show. But at the same time, like, th I wasn't a big fan of the mole for like similar reasons. But I know like in the mole, like there are like more hints. Uh, so I guess they could do something more similar here where it's like, yeah, maybe like a after like two episodes, uh, at the end of the second episode, they reveal to the fans. So I wouldn't. Well, I was I just thinking like even right when they find out with each other who the mole is or the the, the traders are, that's when the audience finds oh, out. Oh, just not the shoulder tap. Like we don't have to see that. Yeah. Like maybe we could see him walk around. Maybe we could see his hand on certain shoulders, but like don't can't unless you're like, what are they wearing? Whose hand is that? Whatever. But like, I don't necessarily need to see that. Um, He could do the yeah. walk around and then cut to like, okay, take off your masks, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I would like that. And like they can show like people like acting like a little suspicious and sure. you you spend that one or two episodes just trying to figure it out yourself. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Yeah. And then like but when I, they reveal I, their clothes to each other, like we, we're like, oh, yeah. I was so wrong or I was so right. Be fun. I don't think I would like it if they if they left it a surprise until like the like reveal to the house as well. Um, like I, like I think it's better that the audience. Like at the end of each round, like when oh. they announce oh. like that, I would not like. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I like the, then I like knowing who the like traders are because I'm usually team traders. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, this is no because there's no sabotage. It wouldn't be fun not knowing who the traders are. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Yeah, you want to see wrong. these conversations happen like each night. Like you don't want to be missing out on that. It's like some of the best part of the show exactly uh so they go to the armory um andy does not receive the shield neither does rachel or stephanie and for a third time ari is receiving the shield which is very surprising three times yeah he's uh young dagger i guess young dagger 2.0 seriously so at the banishment ceremony it's basically as usual kate versus rachel uh they pretty much like make a case for why Rachel is a traitor and Rachel was defending herself and not doing a great job at it for who she's working with. Like I know she's a faithful, but she has to realize that her saying like, I'm like, I'm, what she was doing was not convincing enough for these people. And I don't know what she would have needed to do. Maybe just not be herself. Like it just, she's, yeah, they just think that she's a traitor, and I don't think that there's much that she could have done to really save herself here. Um, and even when she asked Sari, and Sari wasn't sure, I actually got a little bit choked up there. I was like, I felt bad for Rachel because she's like, even you, like, don't you don't even have to explain it to me. Like, it's like it's fine. Like, it's fine. Like, she was really hurt, and I felt quite bad for Rachel there. 
Yeah, it's like it's like the pros and cons of like being cerebral. It's like you like ha- like people are so attached to you that like when you do have to go against them, like they are very emotional because like you're Suri, like everyone loves you and like they feel so connected to you. And I'm sure in real life they're friends and like, I'm sure that connection was real, but at the end of the day, like Suri is doing what she has to do. And um, we've seen it time and time again over the last 15 years of Suri. Like she has this like magnetic She's... pull on people. So yeah, I felt for Rachel too. And like, she, I mean, and she's she just like, I promise tears. everyone I'm faithful. Like, yeah. Uh, they just did not, did not care. Uh, so for mm. the most part, um, she gets most of the vote. I think she got all the votes, actually. I think she got uh, all the votes. Except this time. for, except for oh, Stephanie. Stephanie, Stephanie, Stephanie voted, voted for Kate, Kate yeah. obviously. Yeah. And Rachel, Rachel voted for Kate. Stephanie voted for Kate, obviously. Um, and everybody else voted for Rachel. Rachel. And <laughs> Rachel is even like, "Congratulations, Kate! You're a great traitor." And it's like, okay, but you're still wrong there, Rachel. You're still wrong. Ugh. Yeah. Gonna, well, when Kate that. voted for Rachel, uh, when Kate voted for Rachel, Kate said, uh, "I'm voting for you because I find you really offensive." <laughs> I thought that was funny too. <laughs> Like so direct, uh, like no like yeah. real reason, like game wise. Like yeah, I think you're very offensive. Like, <laughs> Got to like rub salt in the wounds on the way out. Yep. Well, Rachel thinks that they're a bunch of fucking idiots, and congratulations, you got played. I'm a faithful. Yeah. Aww. I mean. Yeah. Poor Rachel. Poor Rachel. I mean, I didn't see Rachel winning this game. But um, she probably did. <laughs> yeah, she definitely did. And like, I think like, I think she would have wrote it out with Suri. Honestly, like, I feel like she would have wrote it to the end with Suri. So makes me think like a little bit like, do you think Suri should have tried to push harder to keep Rachel around? Or do you think it was the right move to like let her loose here? You gotta just let like just go with the group, right? Like, if you stick out of the group, why are you not? Why are you not agreeing with us? Why are you so adamant that it's not her? Like, what? Like, it's just. It would seem like she had more information that they didn't know. And if she right, went, right. like, she might then think that Stephanie and Sari then are now traitors. Like, I don't know. It just she had to go with the majority, and they they had to also see that like even if it's her own friend, she's willing to like stick with the group like she believes in the group she believes in the people that she trusts and rachel's been doing things now that are, she doesn't know if she could trust and sorry rachel I gotta let you go so andy is taking it hard um ari and kate go in to confront andy and from they did to do so after this so it's gotta be christian is what andy says it's like gotta be christian yeah. it's, it's christian. gotta be christian that's finally you got a right read here and like you don't have rachel to be like not christian it's kate, kate. <laughs> like, just derailing people it's from derailing like the right back. choice uh we also see stephanie and quinton discussing christian but kate quinton does not want to be on that train i think he takes it back to kate um and that's all i ended up writing down i watched the rest of the episode but where did, where did it end it was a cliffhanger wasn't it yeah, a little bit of a cliffhanger, not like super cliffhanger. Like it ended with Sari having a confessional where saying uh, they were talking about Christian and then Sari, it flips to Sari saying, and like, this is when you get banished. So, and then it just ended. So obviously like what I envision happening is like they're, they still have Duly to do a murder. murder. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Who gets murdered before Christian gets banished? Um, I think that Andy might have to get murdered. You think Andy? Wait, who was Andy talking to at that end part? Ari, Kate. Yeah, well, Ari might push for Andy to get murdered for the fact that he was trying to save Christian. Um. She's the only, or they're the only one that are on to Christian. Unless yeah. Ari also doesn't care about losing Christian. And in that case, yeah. 
then it'll just be like a toss up, like Quentin, I guess. Yeah, Staff, I mean, Kate maybe? is Kate's safe. Yeah, it, it might come down to like, is Suri willing to cut Steph here, or are they just going to go like safer? Because like you know, like yeah, I mean, obviously Ari, Christian, Suri are the traitors. Kate is not going anywhere. Um, so it comes down to then like Steph, Quentin, or Andy. That's all that's left. Um. I think Quentin, I think because Quentin's like reads are so off that they'll keep him. Of course. Because he suspects Kate, obviously. So that's why I think Andy Although, it might be their time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I do think Suri will want to keep Steph around a little bit longer. Um, and then use like have Steph like help make sure Christian is then um banished next. So yeah, I think episode nine, we're gonna see. Probably Andy and Christian go uh, leave the game. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not really sure. Like, I'm still a little confused as to like, how episode 10 will be formatted. But um, it's, it's different. So you, you wouldn't really be able to guess. Yeah. So I guess like if I had to predict, I'd say final six would be Ari and uh, Suri as the traders. And then uh, Steph, Quentin and Kate. Oh, five. Or that would be the final yeah. Five. Final right. five, yeah. There's seven left. So what a great final five. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And it's exciting. I'm gonna yeah, watch the, I'm, gonna, gonna well, watch the I'm last basically two getting times. off of this and uh, I'm gonna go watch the last two episodes so I don't I could like yeah. get back onto my social media life because like I'm just avoiding everything because I don't want to know what happens before I watch it. So thanks, Matthew, mm -hmm. for coming and uh recapping these last two episodes with me. It was it was awesome. It was my pleasure. I can't wait to find out, and uh, we'll have to uh, maybe do a quick uh, five minute debrief uh, on Wednesday. Slash though, unless on Sunday, I don't know if you do things on Sunday. You wanted to do the last two episodes at like around noon. I'm I'm down. The only issue it's the NFL playoffs starting Sunday, so I'm like full like football day for me. Um, unless you wanted to do a little bit earlier, but earlier um, than noon, like eleven. Is that too early? If you want to, if you want to do eleven, I can do. Yeah, I can do eleven. I think I can I'll, do eleven. I'll just be watching football from one o'clock onwards. So okay, even like eleven thirty if we want to do that. But yeah, yeah, let me know. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Or we could do maybe late night. I don't know what time I'm getting. I'm flying tomorrow, so I don't know what time I'm getting home. But we could do late night tomorrow as well, maybe. Yeah. Anyways, um, I'll let yeah, you. I mean, I'll, I'll be watching you. football tomorrow too. So um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Sports. But Sports uh, football thing. ends at like football ends at eleven thirty ish tomorrow. So I mean, if you want to do it at eleven thirty, I'm I'm good tomorrow or uh, Sunday, like late morning, early afternoon. Okay, perfect. Denzos, well, right. thank you for being here, you traitor, you. Uh, <laughs> we will be probably talking about the next two episodes in the next couple of days. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Please like this video and leave a comment as to who do you think is going to win this season. No spoilers, please, but leave that in the comments. <laughs> and we'll see you guys in a couple of days. Ciao.